welcome to this very special show as we begin our countdown to Lok Sabha 2014. Maharashtra is a battleground state, not just because it sends the second most number of members of parliament to the Lok Sabha, but also because it plays a very crucial role in the health of our economy. I'm Maharu Khanayat and as we begin the series, we take a look at the battleground state of Maharashtra, which is not just a powerful state in itself, play an extremely crucial role in these elections. Mumbai, the financial super hub. The first image that perhaps comes to mind when one thinks of Maharashtra. The urbanized center that is a lifeline, a political metaphor and a platform for state politicians and their electoral chants. Jai Hind, Jai Maharashtra. Bharat Mata Ki Jai. Jai Hind. आपके पास बाईस लाख लोग हैं राजनीतिक ढांचे में आपका एक एम एल ए नहीं निकल रहा इसका कारण क्या है with a highly urbanized vote bank, high aspirational values and a young electorate, coupled with the fact that it sends the second largest number of members of parliament to the Lok Sabha, Maharashtra is a political game changer. Because of this uh, uh, kind of political divide, uh, it's it's very unpredictable. So people and um, uh, most of the political parties are banking on Maharashtra. But with three chief ministers in the past five years, two of them with alleged taint charges, questions raised over the current chief minister's policy paralysis and ever-increasing debt. The state seems to be set for some major changes for a Congress-NCP combine that has been in power for three consecutive terms. There is a lot of uh, anti-incumbency against the Congress-NCP even if they are in government and they seem to be uh, at the moment uh, a little better uh, put together and a better organized than uh, the Shiv Sena and the BJP which are suddenly bickering so much. It is not just anti-incumbency that is likely to affect the fortunes of the ruling combine, but the new election mantra, the fight against corruption that is bucking the trend for the opposition. A large section of the people are very much annoyed with the UPA regime. Because of big economic crisis, at the same time the record of corruption, now the people don't want to vote for Congress. Be it the Adarsh scam, an almost clean chit given to former Chief Minister Ashok Savan, or the irrigation scam, where the Congress ally, the NCP, has gotten away. It seems that Rahul Gandhi's promise of taint-free electoral choice is more for rallies than reality. They will not mention the corruption in Karnataka. They will not say that the chief minister went to jail. They will not say that they are ready brothers who they have sold the entire state to. They don't say these things. But they will talk about corruption. Chokidar chori kar raha hai. Uski to koi charcha nahi ho rahi hai. और हम विपक्ष में बैठ करके आपके पापों का हिसाब मांगते हैं इसलिए हम चोर हो गए आई डोंट थिंक पीपल आर रियली बॉदर्ड अबाउट द करप्शन द वे मीडिया इज बॉदर्ड इफ दैट्स द केस हाफ अ डजन एमपीज आई मीन मिनिस्टर्स फ्रॉम मध्य प्रदेश और फ्रॉम छत्तीसगढ़ दे वुड हैव गॉट रीइलेक्टेड 
in the recently uh, held five state elections. Despite the language barrier that most AAP fielded candidates face in Maharashtra, it is these debutants who are likely to cut into the anti-Congress and the anti-Modi vote. The difference between us and some of the established parties is this is not a top-down party. This is a bottom-ups party. And I really believe that the people of this city, the Mumbaikar, is now a bit tired of the political establishment and the fact that despite all these years, nothing has changed. But what they lack in Maharashtra is a face to take it to the dizzying heights it achieved in the country's capital. A recent unexpected meeting with Nitin Gadkari and Raj's open praise for Narendra Modi while fielding candidates against the Sena has not just upset the Udav-led Shiv Sena but also spoiled the pitch for the BJP-led NDA. केवळ सरकार स्थापन करण्याच्या इराद्याने निवडणूक लढणार असाल तर तसं एकदा स्पष्ट करा आणि मग गरज पडली तर काँग्रेसचाही पाठिंबा आम्हाला चालेल असं जर असेल तर तेही स्पष्ट करा असे माझे दोन महत्वाचे प्रश्न आहेत while modi might want to ally with both factions of the sena in his bid for the center this move has the potential to turn the sena hostile to its long standing ally the bjp neither the uh, other bjp leaders nor particularly nitin gadkari could have been unaware of the fact that there is this visceral hatred uh, between uh, Raj Thakre and Uddhav Thakre and Uddhav particularly is very very uh, what do you say sensitive and very very paranoid and conscious about this. Given the constant parleys that are happening in Maharashtra it is extremely important to look at the history of the state to find out if there is any precedent that explains the present. One is that we all have faith in the judiciary and therefore we should respect that. But there is also the other side of perception. The perception is to the contrary. The perception is not that what the pronouncements have come so far from the judiciary. Despite being at the helm in Maharashtra for over a decade, these two allies have had a stormy relationship. Partnerships are fraught at the best of times. And this comment was yet again a bargaining ploy. And true to his political strong arm tactics, once seat sharing was in place, Pawar was back to deriding the BJP's prime ministerial candidate. <laughs> Most would look at this alliance with interest since Pawar's NCP has forever looked for political friends and shopped openly after 1999, even though it joined hands with the Congress as a junior partner. Irony of the party being formed after moving away from the Congress over Sonia Gandhi's nationality and then subsequently coming back to the Congress fold soon after is not lost on most. It's absolutely uh, uh, little love and uh, most of it uh, hate because both the parties, they look at the same constituencies, they look uh, at the same uh, voting base and they have the same uh, uh, kind of political agenda. So as of now, it, it's, a, it's a marriage of uh, convenience and it will stay as long as both parties are of any utility to each other. Fighting this Congress-NCP combined is another. The BJP and Shiv Sena alliance came to power in 1995 in the state and since then the Saffron combine has got rich dividends in Lok Sabha polls as well. Entrenched with a largely Hindu nationalist agenda, this combine's consistent performance in the local municipal polls has taken it from strength to strength. In the national narrative, its stellar performance of 33 seats in 1996 is the repeat they want this year. Western Maharashtra is the turf or the gud or the turf of uh, the Congress and the NCP. Although uh, that is not to say that the Shiv Sena and the BJP cannot upset the Congress and the NCP in this area. Uh, because even uh, even uh, at the last elections, you know, they did pretty well. So if they put their mind to it, 
uh, the Shiv Sena and the BJP can definitely uh, uh, overcome the NCP over here. How much? One cannot say at this stage. But the factor that caused them an upset in 2009 threatens to cause deep fissures in this Saffron Alliance, Raj Thakre. And this time, it is the BJP, or rather Nitin Gadkari, that is to blame for that. Sena has every reason to fume over Gadkari's overture to Raj considering the dent he caused in 2009. Five years back, even though the MNS had failed to win seats, each of its nine candidates in the Mumbai Thane Nashik belt had got over a lakh votes, critically contributing to the Congress NCP victory. For Modi, to make the saffron combine tilt the tide needs more than a wave among the urban middle class fed up with the Congress NCP combine. The past trends show that Lok Sabha seats get evenly distributed between the saffron combine and the Congress NCP one. In 2004, Sena BJP won 25 to Congress NCP's 22. In 2009, the Sena BJP dropped to 20 as the Congress NCP improved to 25. But complicating the Maharashtra political jigsaw further is the Ahmadmi factor. It is starting, it is opening its account over here. And uh, I am not uh, too enamored with the AAP candidates, the kind of candidates that have been so far given in Maharashtra. And uh, they are an unknown quantity, you know. I mean, ultimately, it will depend upon their personal charisma or probably the personal charisma of Arvind Kejriwal. Um, one should not take it for granted because all said and done, we took Kama Admi Party for granted in New Delhi and they uh, showed us a miracle. So anything could happen. I would not write it off completely. They can definitely be a spoiler, a major spoiler. So will the Kejriwal factor square off the Raj Thakre one and pit old alliances on a level playing field? Who will be king and who will play kingmaker? That is next. In every election, it is extremely important to know who wants to be king. More importantly, who wants to be kingmaker. The irony is not lost on most when at the hustings, the roles actually get reversed. This time around as well, in Maharashtra, everybody knows who wants to be king. But this time, it's going to be the kingmakers that are going to play the crucial difference. For a state that is so crucial to the final Lok Sabha arithmetic, the contest is bound to be fierce. As Shiv Sena chief, Udav Thakre has tried hard to earn his place within the organization after the death of Chief Bal Thakre. A huge void to fill, but many Sena insiders say that the damage to the party post Thakre senior has not been as much as anticipated. While Udhav was initially seen to oppose Narendra Modi's candidature for the Prime Minister's post, he modified that stand soon after and is using the alliance with the BJP to further the Hindutva platform. However, the Raj factor is an open threat to this two-decade-old Saffron alliance and Udhav realizes that. NCP President Sharad Pawar tried his best to get Narendra Modi's attention by suggesting that 2002 should be forgotten and eventually had to settle for the Congress and he did that with a U-turn. Pawar's shopping for allies, though not new, has seen a new desperation. The dwindling support within the farmer community in its traditional strongholds of Western Maharashtra is one of the main reasons. Add to that 
an open power struggle with his own nephew and a string of scams. For BJP, it is not one but two strategists who are ruling the roost and perhaps hurting the chances of the BJP in the state. Former BJP President Nitin Gadkadi and Deputy Leader of Opposition in the Lok Sabha Gopinath Munde both trying to upstage each other over every major poll decision. It is this rivalry and Munde's closeness to Shiv Sena that made Gadkari lunch with Raj Thakre. Munde is seen as a mass leader, whereas Gadkari will be testing public support for the first time during these elections. Munde has taken on Pawar as a political rival, whereas Gadkari has been seen to cozy up to the Maratha strongman. That has been the trademark style of the other Thakre, Maharashtra Navnirman Sena Chief Raj Thakre. But the anti toll naka agitation did not garner the same steam as in 2009. With the same chauvinistic appeal as the Sena, Raj Thakre, however, has not been able to have the pan Maharashtra effect it wanted. However, the 2009 results show that the MNS cut into the Shiv Sena BJP vote and helped the Congress win in at least 10 constituencies. It is ironical, but the scam that brought Prithviraj Savan from Delhi to head the state of Maharashtra might turn out to be his nemesis this election. While he is seen as a leader of impeccable integrity, questions over his delay in decision making and being seen as a mute spectator to scams, especially from within the Congress, has marred his image. With pressure on the Congress to look at real political arithmetic, the pressure is to bring these old hands back and that might mean a further setback to Prithviraj Savan. Unprecedented success in Delhi elections might have caught the imagination of the nation, but in Maharashtra, it might not be the same for Arvind Kejriwal. For one, there is no face that can lead the party in Maharashtra. And in the financial hub, there is still ambiguity on what AP's economic vision is. What we want is free markets, what we want is for enterprise to flourish, what we want is a level playing field, what we want is transparency and accountability. While Mumbai came out in hordes during Kejriwal's anti-corruption crusade days, it remains to be seen if the same people come out to vote for his party. Maharashtra sends 48 MPs to the Lok Sabha, second only in terms of numbers to that of Uttar Pradesh. In the last several elections, the fight has been between the Congress and the NCP on one side, the Sena and the BJP on the other. In the 2009 elections, the Congress and NCP combined won 25 of the 48 seats from the state. And along with Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu, MPs from Maharashtra were the mainstay of the UPA government at the center. This time around, however, the Sena and the BJP are making a determined effort to wrest control of the state. And if they were indeed to succeed, not only would it boost the overall tally of the NDA, but it would also make Naren Modi's task that much easier. This time around in Maharashtra, I believe the ruling combine has its task cut out. Not only must it deal with the combined anti-incumbency of both the state and the center, it also has to deal with the challenge posed by a resurgent NDA. And of course, take care of the Ayam Admi Party, which has been sniping at its heels. While the BJP and the Sena have certain advantages, there are also certain critical factors that they need to contend with. One is their inability to accommodate the MNS in their fold, and the other is the emergence of the Aam Admi Party. Both these parties could ultimately cut into the anti-Congress vote. My assessment of the Aam Admi Party is that while it will make its presence felt in urban areas, especially in Mumbai, however, it will not make the kind of impact that it did in Delhi. to be as exciting an election as it's going to be crucial and Maharashtra is going to play a key role in finally unlocking the doors to New Delhi. That's all that we have time for. This is Maharo Khanayat signing off. Stay tuned for more.